Hello, this is Tak Chung from Walk with Tak, and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. If you have any question regarding this video, please write me at walkwithtak at gmail dot com. Uh, I will answer your question more fully uh, through email. Uh, if you have any other questions or recommendation to my YouTube channel, I would love to hear from you. Uh, recently, I posted a video on low men that use uh, spaghetti pasta noodles. I usually cook a large portion of spaghetti pasta noodles because I can use it in many different capacity. In addition to use it in a spaghetti dish,、uh, the pasta noodles turn out to be excellent for cooking many different type of noodle dish, including the Asian noodle dish such as lo mein and chow mein. Now,、uh, I usually store them in the refrigerator for about forty-eight、uh, hours before I use them to cook in a wok, and this will prevent them from stick to the wok. And that turned out to be really a secret: how to use spaghetti noodles in a chow mein. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate a chicken chow mein dish. A lot of you have questions about what is the difference between lo mein and chow mein.、Uh, as I will explain later, actually the difference are actually quite small. A lo mein is usually you just add the food ingredients that is what you want to mix the noodle directly、uh, without cooking it. Whereas chow mein, you add the noodles to the wok、uh, after you cook the, those ingredients that you want to mix it with the pasta noodles, and that seems to be the major difference. Uh, sometimes it depends on how long、uh, you cook those noodles in the wok, and then in the future I will demonstrate to you another way to use the spaghetti pasta noodles. In this case, you actually pan fry the noodles. For this dish, I cook everything together in the wok. I'm going to use my Cusina 14-inch stainless steel wok. I first going to spot season the wok, and then、uh, the next step is to、uh, shallow fry the chicken. And、to create a light crispy texture for the chicken, as well as、uh, to enhance the natural flavor of the chicken, I first coat the chicken with one tablespoon of cornstarch and one teaspoon of the wok with tar basic seasoning mix.、Uh, if you like to give it a try, I have it on Amazon, and I will leave the link below the video. The cornstarch is really excellent in the. Cooking the chicken this way because the cornstarch first of all it coats the chicken and it actually protects the chicken from the heat so that the chicken will not turn dry and then the cornstarch will also give the chicken a very light crispy texture. Now、uh, you can、uh, uh, decide what kind of seasoning you want to add to the chicken. I use the basic seasoning mix, but you can use any other type of seasoning that you would like. For example, garlic pepper will be very good, and、uh, lemon pepper will also be excellent. This method is really enjoyable to use, as well as give the chicken wonderful flavor. And in fact,、uh, after I start using this method,、uh, my wife told me that、uh, she would not want me to cook the chicken any other way. And this tells you how great this method is. And of course, I enjoy this method as well. It takes about sixty to ninety seconds to fry the chicken on one side. As you can see, it has taken on a nice browning, and then I turn it over to fry it on the other side. And、next, I add about one cup of shiitake mushroom.、Uh, these are fresh shiitake mushroom.、Uh, they have great flavor.、Uh, you can get them at many Asian grocery store.、Uh, this is followed by the addition of about、uh, four cups of broccoli. At this point, it is important to keep an eye on the amount of oil in the wok.、Uh, you can check at the bottom of the wok.、Uh, if you find that there's not enough oil or no oil at the bottom of the wok,、uh, you should add a little bit more oil. I usually keep my oil in a squeeze bottle, so I can add any amount as I desire.、Uh, one thing is that、uh, the broccoli florets tend to absorb oil readily.、Uh, you want to be able to coat the floret with amount of oil because otherwise the floret will get burned. And having the oil is important because the oil provides the temperature environment、uh, for the Maillard reaction to occur, which is necessary for generate flavor molecule on the surface of the food ingredients. At this method, frequently known as the dry stir frying method,、uh, using this method, I do not add any water until way toward the end when I season the dish.、Uh, this method will give the broccoli an、uh, excellent texture. 
Uh, the florette will be soft, but the uh, stem of the broccoli remain crunchy, and this gives an extra uh, contrast to the broccoli, and you will find that it provides an excellent culinary experience. Uh, I just add a little bit more oil uh, to make sure that uh, I just at least uh, provide the florette of the broccoli a reasonable amount of oil so that they will not get burned. And this will also allow me to cook them to the texture that I'm looking for. If you like broccoli not overcooked, this is an excellent way to cook them. And next, I'm going to add some yellow squash. Now, this squash came from my wife's garden. I'm going to add only about one cup because this dish, the main ingredient is the broccoli and the yellow squash serves as a secondary ingredient. And this is the common practice when uh, you create a vegetable medley. You choose one ingredient to be the primary ingredient and you use the other uh, to supplement it. It will provide a uh, exceptional culinary experience when you have contrast of different food ingredients. And by now, the dish is almost cooked. And next, I'm going to add three cups of spaghetti pasta noodles. Now, these noodles has been stored in the refrigerator for about 48 hours. It is actually uh, let them to dry out a little bit, so when you stir fry them in a wok, they will not stick to the bottom of the wok. Uh, right now, I switch to a pair of uh, tongs, which is much easier uh, to break up the noodles and to mix with other ingredients in the wok. Now, the difference between a chow man and a low man, as I mentioned earlier, a chow man, the word chow actually means stir fry, which means stir fry noodles. In the case of chow man, you actually uh, put the noodles directly into the wok and then you stir fry everything together. Whereas in the case of low man, uh, you do not uh, stir fry the noodles, you just mix the noodles of the ingredients that you have uh, finished cooking. In here, I'm going to season the noodles in multiple steps. Uh, first of all, I'm going to add some uh, oyster sauce. I'm going to start out with about uh, two tablespoons of oyster sauce, but I'm going to make adjustment accordingly as I continue to mix everything together because the flavor is going to change. And the best way is that uh, to uh, have the flexibility to adjust the flavor as you are on the go. Uh, instead of uh, making uh, an addition of a fixed amount, uh, this will give you much more greater control of what the flavor you would like to be. Uh, for this noodle dish, I would like to create a sauce to go with the noodle because that will coat the noodle, give it a nice flavor. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to add a little bit of water at a time so that I will not add too much water. At the same time, uh, I noticed that I have some of the ingredients got stuck at the bottom of the wall. So I'm going to use my spot cleaning method as I adding the water to the wok. I look for the area that has uh, ingredients that has been stuck and burned, and I add a tiny amount of water right at the region. And then, as you notice here, I use the wok spatula to scrape them off. And this is a great way uh, to clean as you cook. And I call this spot cleaning because you clean right at the spot. And you will find that with this method, uh, when you're ready to wash wok in the sink, it's much, much simpler. Uh, the final ingredients I'm going to add uh, is some cherry tomatoes. The cherry tomatoes will provide nice color presentation as well as it will give great flavor. I do not cut the cherry tomatoes apart because this way I always enjoy when I bite into the cherry tomatoes, it will give a nice uh, a package of a tomato sauce. I did a final taste test to make sure the flavor is the way how I would like it to be. Uh, I discovered that I probably like the flavor just a bit sweeter. And so one way to do it is to add some hoisin sauce, uh, which will provide some sweetness uh, to the dish. Uh, this is a good example of flavor chasing, a method that I use uh, to adjust flavor for my dish. Each time when I uh, adjust the flavor, I always start out with a small amount of the flavoring agent, in this case the oyster sauce, and then I will try to decide what is the flavor that I like, because I discover different ingredients uh, when you vary them, they can make the flavor taste different with the same amount of flavoring agents that you add. And last but not the least, I add some Shaoxing cooking wine. 
I always add the wine toward the end because it will provide the greatest flavor. Okay, now the dish is done, and the total cook time is a little bit over ten minutes. Cooking this relatively complex dish in ten minutes is an excellent time. And as my friend George often said to me, is that efficiency is really important in, for him in his home cooking because if he knows that he can cook a meal in ten or fifteen minutes, it is far more likely for him to cook. Otherwise, he would find that、uh, the amount of time that he spent would be more than he willing to put in. And my chicken is already prepped in advance. As soon as I enter into the kitchen, I took it out of the freezer. And I put it in a bowl of lukewarm water to thaw out the chicken, and then I'm getting ready to set up. I have all the ingredients, all the vegetables have already in my advanced prepping. All I need to do is find them and then、uh, set them next to the kitchen counter. Then I am ready to cook. And by this time, the chicken has already been thawed out, and this makes cooking really efficient. This dish is a good demonstration of the four attributes of the fast cooking system. Uh, which is flavor chasing, advanced prepping, stir frying, and template based cooking. As you can see, each one of these attributes are represented in how this dish is being cooked. Here, demonstrate the efficiency as well as the benefit of advanced prepping.、Uh, it will allow you to enter in the kitchen and focus on the cooking. Which is the fun and enjoyable part. In this case, no matter how tired I am during the day, when I walk in the kitchen,、uh, my energy comes back because I know I'm going to do something fun and interesting. But if I have to prep everything before I start to cook, I probably will not proceed. If you have not started advanced prepping, I strongly recommend that you go ahead and do that. I post a video each day to help you to make home cooking as part of your daily routine. If you like to learn more about this cooking system, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. So keep on cooking. I will see you tomorrow.